afternoon also from my side. Um, my name is Christina Schwarz. I am a software developer for engine controls in AVL. And today I am presenting some use cases for using reinforcement learning on the edge in engine controls. I'm going to talk about uh, specific challenges that the automotive industry is currently facing in software development and the motivation for using AI-based algorithms for engine control. Then I'm going to introduce you to the strategies for air puff controls and diesel particulate filter controls using reinforcement learning and why it is important to execute the AI techniques on the edge. Finally, I would like to summarize the advantages and disadvantages of using AI in engine controls. So what are the main challenges that we are currently facing in the software development for combustion engines? First of all, we have the legislative push for emission limits becoming harder to adhere to every year. To meet the targets, both software and hardware de development is essential. Second, we, uh, the same software should be applicable to a high variation of vehicles, such as passenger cars, commercial vehicles, and even construction vehicles. And third, the software should be applicable worldwide and should consider different ambient and weather conditions, traffic conditions, and other realistic variations in the operating environment. These challenges leads to a very complex software structure and an extremely high calibration effort, which is very cost intensive. This is why in the past 25 years, the software and controls have changed completely and have gained huge prominence. The complexity of the functions in engine control units has increased immensely, while on the other hand, the vehicle time, uh, development time has decreased. Also in future, it is not expected for the software complexity to decrease, especially if we consider changes in the user behavior and steady advances, advances towards the market adoption of autonomous driving or connected vehicles. With the usage of artificial intelligence, we can increase the calibration efficiency, which translates to a considerable cost reduction. Furthermore, we can apply the machine learning models on several different vehicle types, which enables software portability between a wide range of vehicles. And finally, by employing data intelligence, there is a potential to achieve huge improvements in terms of model training, as more environmental and operational information from various global locations can be exploited for model training. Now let's consider the AirPuff control. AVL's experience with AirPuff controls started almost 20 years ago. In 2005, we were able to build the first deathbed demonstrator using our software. The results were validated in a vehicle later on and several SMP projects followed where we extended and improved our control algorithms year by year. To get an overview of the AirPuff, I'm going to touch upon the main components and their influences. There are two key variables that the AirPuff control relies on. These are the lambda, which is the air to fuel ratio and the intake manifold boost pressure. The lambda is controlled via the exhaust gas recirculation valve, also called EGR valve, and the intake throttle. And the intake pressure is controlled via the turbocharger. Now, the problem is that the actuators have a strong influences uh, on the sensor values. This is indicated with the blue arrows in the figure. The trade-off between performance and robustness is conflicting crosswise in the coupled MIMO system. By replacing the standard controllers with a data-driven model, it is possible to achieve improvements in model accuracy as more environmental conditions are considered for the model training. Furthermore, the usage of these data-driven models is significant, significantly reduces the calibration effort and therefore leads to a cost reduction. Additionally, we could use the data-driven model to detect an air mass drift for a lambda adaptation. As the inputs to the data-driven models change rapidly, a high flow of information is required, 
and the execution of the AI algorithm on the edge is indispensable. The second application, which I am presenting today, is the data-driven temperature control of the diesel oxidation catalyst to burn the soot in a diesel particulate filter. Here on this slide on the top left, you can see a state-of-the-art after treatment system for Euro 6 applications. Euro 6 is the current emiss emission legislation standard. The system consists of a diesel oxidation catalyst, also known as DOC, the diesel particulate filter DPF and the NOx reduction device selective catalytic reaction catalyst called SCR. The diesel particulate filter uses a wide range of applications to fil filter out particulate matter such as soot and ash from the system. When a filter gets full for control engineering, when the accumulated soot comes to a critical point, an active regeneration is triggered to burn the soot. To do so, temperatures of up to 600 degrees Celsius are necessary. In, in a normal operation, such high temperatures are not generated by the combustion engine. Therefore, the fuel is oxidized, so burned in the diesel oxidation catalyst in order to heat up the system. The amount of fuel which is needed for the temperature increase is calculated um, normally with a closed loop controller, whereas the dead time is a specific challenge. Our strategy is based on replacing the standard controller with a data-driven model to reduce calibration efforts and therefore, again, drive down the costs during the vehicle development phase. Furthermore, the data-driven approach enables the inclusion of wider operating conditions for improved adaptability to different ambient conditions. This is especially important when considering the aging behavior of components. Again, the relevant input signals to the data-driven model can be very transient and need to be updated in real time. This is why also for this use case, the computation on the edge is essential. After explaining some of our use cases, I will now sum up the advantages of using AI-based algorithms, but also highlight some drawbacks. But first, let's recap why we would like to use AI-based algorithm algorithms in the automotive sector. The ever so more stringent emission legislation is imposing on the software to have a higher precision in controls. The time to the market is getting smaller and smaller, and development costs need to be reduced. And at last, by incorporating AI-based algorithms, a reduction of energy consumption can be achieved due to lower computing efforts. Finally, I would like to provide an overview of the advantages and disadvantages we see in using these algorithms. First, the advantages. There is a significantly lower computational effort when executing new control algorithms on an automotive controller in comparison to the standard approach. Furthermore, the radical change in the development process can drastically reduce engineering efforts. However, drawbacks also need to be considered. First, a lack of transparency of machine learned algorithms reduces the ability to analyze the model in details, as it is the case with a physical model. Second, the new engineering skills are required and third, due to the nature of machine learning algorithms, huge amounts of data are needed for training purposes. However, from ABL's perspective, the future of automotive controls relies on the usage of machine learning, especially with the execution of AI algorithms on the edge, we see a big benefit for our future applications. That was all from my side, thank you.